Hey everybody, it's Pastor Brian Ross from Grace Life Bible Church in Grand Rapids, Michigan. We want to welcome you to our midweek video here and also to our YouTube channel here, Grace Life Bible. If you haven't already done so, if you would consider subscribing and ringing the alarm bell over here so that you can stay current with the ministry when we create content here uh, midweek and also when we go live from our assembly building. We want to welcome you uh, to this video. It's great to be with you as always. And um, we are also uh, just excited about uh, the featured book from now until Easter, my book, Don't Pass Over Easter, A New Defense of Easter in Acts 12.4. This is the time of year where the topic of Easter in Acts 12.4 gets debated, and we are uh, uh, really excited to offer this book. This book came out uh, two years ago, right when COVID was breaking. And um, it's, it's just an exciting thing to be able to offer this book. And if you haven't already done so, uh, if you consider uh, picking a copy of this up as a means of trying to help support the ministry, we would certainly appreciate that. Plus, you're going to want to have this content as far as being able to uh, talk conversantly about that translation of Easter in X 12.4. So if you haven't already done so, please consider picking that up. Also, I want to remind you about our Rumble channel here. We established this channel in 2021 as an alt tech site to YouTube, should something happen to our YouTube ministry. We've been slowly growing here uh, in our subscribers on Rumble. So if you're into alt tech sites, uh, consider joining us here as well, um, as we are keeping this in reserve as a backup site, should something happen to our YouTube ministry. So lately, I've been talking a lot in these videos about issues related to translation and text and uh, the history of the King James Bible and the primary source work in progress documents and so forth. Um, I'm going to break from that here just a little bit this week, and um, I want to address or announce really um, the release this week of the complete notes on sonship edification. So this document, I will put a link to it in the website, in the sorry, in the notes underneath this video, sonship edification, tracing its origin and development within the Mid-Acts Grace Movement. Back in 2014 and 15, as part of the Grace History Project, um, I was getting a lot of questions about this, and there were some other things going on at the time that led me into a consideration of um, something I didn't really know anything about at the time, which was sonship edification and what that was. And in the fall of 2021, I created the, I re-released these videos. These videos were on a YouTube channel of uh, somebody who used to attend our assembly and moved away to another state. And I needed to migrate these videos into uh, onto the YouTube page here of Grace Life Bible Church. Uh, the gentleman that did this has been a, a great friend of the ministry, still is, um, and helps me every week with uh, sending me uh, MP3 audios, et cetera. But we needed to get this on our own channel. And um, what I did is I re-rebroadcast these uh, last fall, similar to what I'm doing with the Grace History, rest of the Grace History Project right now, which I'll say more about later. And I created this playlist for Sonship Edification. And what I tried to do is put links under the uh, every one of these videos to the uh, audio, PDF notes, and PowerPoint if I used one for each given lesson. And what was clear as I was doing that was there were some gaps in the PDF notes. So in between 2015 and last fall, when I went about to create this playlist, we had redone the church's website. And for some reason, some of the old things didn't port or migrate over to the new website the way that they should have. And so there were some gaps in the PDF sequencing notes on the church's website, which then meant that when I went to link to those things for the videos in this playlist, they were missing. And so some folks reached out to me and they asked if they could have uh, those notes. And so um, that, along with requests that I've had in the past, if I could take all the notes and put them together into one spot, is what led to me working on this document and uh, just releasing it this week to the church's website. So I will put a link in the description both to this document and to the playlist although i do want to say a few things about the document itself so the document has within it embedded links uh, i've checked all of them i think they all work um, as you know sometimes links 
websites fall into disrepair or they're abandoned or they're not used anymore and those kinds of things. So to the best of my knowledge, all of the links embedded in the document do work. Um, the problem with fixing them is that I have to re-upload a whole new document, which creates a whole another link. So I've gone through this. I'm pretty sure most of them work. If they don't, you shouldn't be given enough information in the document for where you could still try to find the information or the documentation, I should say, for what I'm saying. And then there's a table of contents. And in the table of contents, these are all active links to the videos in the playlist. OK, so, for example, if I want to listen to Lesson 143, I can click this link and it'll load the YouTube video. All right. Under the YouTube video, you would find a link to the audio. And then if there was a PowerPoint or something along those lines, uh, you could find it there as well. There's also a link here to the complete playlist that would link back to this playlist here that I showed you a moment ago. So the table of contents, all of these links, uh, all of these lessons listed in the table of contents are active links, right? And then I just want to show you this as well. When you scroll down, let's just go to lesson one here. When, or let the first lesson, which is lesson 143 or on page one, this is now an active link as well back to the YouTube video. So you can get to the YouTube videos either in each individual lesson or off the table of contents like I just showed you. And then embedded within each lesson are links, et cetera, as well as the citations, uh, by citations, I mean quotes and where I'm getting the information that I'm quoting. So here we have C.H. McIntosh, Notes in Genesis. And then at the end of each lesson is a work cited that has what I cited as far as uh, proper documentation, etc. And then sometimes there's an appendix um, related to that lesson following. So this is a pretty big document. It's 286 pages long. Um, it's got all the information in it, and I used proper historical research pr uh, processes, et cetera, to, to establish this, all right? Now, I wanna address something else. I'm, I'm aware of the fact that there's been some um, scuttlebutt, if you will, on, on YouTube and social media and on, in comments uh, on certain YouTube channels uh, related to Sunship Edification and my teaching on Sunship Edification and, some 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 statements made about how um, people think that I'm not that I um, made stuff up or that I was uh, not accurately uh, representing the teachings of sonship edification. Um, you know, I'm not going to um, spend a lot of time defending uh, that as far as um, what people's perceptions are, but I do want to just briefly address the process used to create this document. All right just so people are aware of it. So as the title suggests, this is tracing the origin and development within the Mid-Axe Grace Movement. Sonship Edification is a, a development of the last 20 years in the Grace Movement through the teaching ministry of Keith Blades. All right, Keith R. Blades is the fountainhead of what is now called Sonship Edification or what has been called Sonship Edification. Now, the reality is, and you'll read about this if you go if you uh, decide to go through the material here in the document, is that a lot of people are not aware of this, and the reason they're not aware of it is because there are essentially two blades. And what I mean by that is the following: there is the blades of the popular book-length works, Satan and His Plan of Evil, a survey of Bible doctrine. Um, have you ever wondered what heaven is like? The Gospel of the Grace of God, make it clear, make it plain, and then two volumes in the simple survey of the Bible. Um, if all you have read are Blades' book-length works, then you're not going to be aware of the fact that Blades uh, was, was indeed the fountainhead of sonship edification. Let me just say, early in my life, in my early 20s, Satan and his plan of evil, you can tell, is extremely beat up and taped together was a cornerstone of my life and ministry as far as understanding the scriptures from a mid-acts dispensational point of view. This was one of my go-to resources, and I still recommend Satan and his plan of evil. But folks who 
have not read Blades' as quarterlies. And by the quarterlies, I mean his Enjoy the Bible quarterly. These are all of Blades' Enjoy the Bible quarterlies, okay? Now, what I did is I took these and I laid them out. I, I got all of them. This is every single one that he ever did. I laid them out on the table and I read them in their chronological order, trying to trace the thought development of Blades' theology as he was writing in the quarterlies. It is in the quarterlies that Blades sets forth the ideas of sonship edification. So if all you've read are the book length works, Satan and his plan of evil being the most prominent, and you've never read the quarterlies, you would not be aware of the fact that Blades was arguing for sonship edification. So for somebody to say that I am lying or that I am not uh, accurately representing, this document here on the screen is the result of the studies that I've done. So not only have I read Blades, cited Blades, I've also read and included here in my due diligence, The Adoption of Sons, uh, The Doctrine of Sonship by Rod Jones, as well as the book-length works of David Winston Bush on the issues related to sonship edification, sonship suffering, prayer, and intercessory ministry, um, The Fullness of Christ, The Prisoner uh, and the Creature, Sonship Establishment Series, just to name a few of the titles there. Um, also, the documents contain direct quotes from primary sources, both from uh, the writings of Jones, uh, Rod Jones, um, David Winston Bush, the Keith Blades, as well as the teaching notes of Mark Newbold from Triangle Bible Church in um I believe it's for, if my memory's not mistaken, I believe it's Virginia or North Carolina. I can't remember which. Uh, sorry if I'm mistaken on that point. But you can see right here you have the, the printed published notes as well as the published notes of um, Michael McDaniel from Millennium Bible Institute. And here's all McDaniel's notes and his breakdown. So if we just open up one Sonship establishment, we can see there are literally tons of notes here. And these are the teaching notes that these brethren have used to teach sonship edification. So there's published on their websites. They're readily available. If the teachings in the if the if the teachings found in the notes are not emblematic of how they wish to be understood in the uh, enunciation of sonship edification, then I, I'm not sure how I could be held uh, in. Uh, contempt, so to speak, because I'm quoting from their published sources. So the bottom line is, is that what I've done in the, in, in, in my study of sonship edification, I've also looked at all the precursors of sonship edification in the work of Zane Hodges, um, as far as the gospel under siege, Joseph Dillo and his, his uh, books, The Final Destiny and The Reign of the Servant Kings. Um, G.H. Lang, Firstborn Sons, Their Rights and Risks. So the fruit of all of that research and study is in the document and in the playlist and in what I taught. So I just want to address that myth, the myth that I'm making stuff up. I took all care to properly cite things, to use proper historiographical methods to study these things, to cite them properly, so that there are extensive quotes and citations from the actual teachers of sonship edification in this document. And what has happened here recently is a sort of new generation of sonship teachers is emerging. And um, I created the playlist and put this out, and I'm putting this out for those who are interested in seeing and understanding where this idea came from, and how this theological system developed. It is a theological system. It is a theological system developed by Keith Blades. And the goal of the theological system is to establish a fool, a foolproof method for edifying somebody, how somebody could be edified. And it treats the Pauline epistles, as you can see here, as a curriculum that one must matriculate through in the proper sense and sequence 
passing all of the checkpoints before they move through the curriculum so that the at the end, somebody emerges as a properly edified saint. That's what this is about. This is a theological system that has developed within the Mid-Acts Grace Movement, primarily through the ministry of Keith Blades. He is the fountainhead. He writes about it in all of, in the quarterlies. Included in this document is a historiographical study of the emergence of sonship edification in the quarterlies of Keith Blades and how that happened. So that's what this is about. And the, uh, I'm, I'm not trying to um, belittle or besmirch anybody. I'm just trying to put the information out there so that folks are aware of it, so that they can access it, so that they can read through it, watch the video, study through the notes, and have everything accessible to them uh, through one spot. So that's what this document is. It's, a, it's all of the, the culminating research in one spot along with proper documentation and, and of, of what was being said and, and how it emerged and how it became um, something that, that came on the scene in the Grace Movement uh, since the year um, 20, uh, 2000, excuse me, and how it's Blades and Mark Newbold that are primarily responsible for the enunciation, articulation, and teaching of Sonship Edification and I did, pe folks just need to know what it, what it is, know what it's about. In full transparency, I don't agree with it. Um, I I think it's um, a, I think it's a system of theology that is extreme that that is um, promising a foolproof method for for edification, yet is still very much um, uh, works based. And those are my opinions after a thorough investigation of the system, its origins, how it, where it came from, and how it developed. Um, so I commend this to you if you're interested in in it, and just want to address the idea that um, it was not that I was not accurately stating and giving some sense in this video of the scope of the research that went into the production of this document and the playlist there on sonship edification. So. That's really all I want to say about it. The rest of the document, I feel, speaks for itself. And uh, folks can study it and matriculate through the information on their own time and at their own pace. So I do want to remind everybody before we go about the Grace History Project. We are rebroadcasting the Grace History Project on this channel here every Monday, Wednesday, Friday morning at 9 o'clock. By the end of the week, by tomorrow morning, we will have 59 lessons in the playlist. We are right in the section now where we're talking about Darby, how dispensation, how Darby exported dispensational theology out of Great Britain and into the United States, and how dispensational theology uh, began to impact the millenary movement here in the United States in the in the latter half of the 19th century. So there's a lot of really good, interesting information that we're right in the thick of talking about. So I would commend this playlist to you. I also want to remind you about my uh, adult Sunday school class from this generation forever, a study of God's promise to preserve his word. We're still at this every Sunday morning at nine o'clock. We go live for this uh, here on YouTube, also uh, on Facebook, and now also on our church's, um, right on our church's website here. If you go to gracelifebiblechurch.com and click on live stream, you can pick up the live streams now right here on the church's homepage gracelifebiblechurch.com. Also want to remind you about our podcast of my wife and I that we do, the Just Grace of Podcast with Brian and Becky Ross. We had a new episode last week. We're going to try to record something new. Hopefully I get it out before the weekend uh, if time permits. Also, reminder about my book. Please don't forget about the book, Don't Pass Over Easter, A New Defense of Easter in Acts 12.4. Pick one of these up. It's not a long book. It'll go into the history and word usage, et cetera, related to the, the word Easter. So we encourage you to pick that up. Folks, if you've never trusted Jesus Christ, if you've never relied exclusively on his shed blood for you on the cross, his burial, his resurrection as the only total complete payment for your sin, he was delivered for your offenses, he was raised again for your justification. If you never relied and trusted exclusively on the finished work of Jesus Christ as the only total complete payment for your sin, do it today before it's everlasting too too late. The world is a crazy place. Nobody is guaranteed tomorrow. 
We don't know what's going to happen. And we can have assurance of salvation now through the atoning work of the Lord Jesus Christ and his death on the cross for our sins. If you've never trusted Jesus Christ, do it today before it's everlasting too late. Thanks for your attention. We'll see you next time.